When people get connected to people and vote to vote, democracy is created. India had its first elections in 1951 to 1952. Okay, okay. Elections in the country were difficult to organize following independence. Hmm. At the time, just 16% of the population was literate. We were preparing to stand on our own. In these circumstances, convincing the public of the importance of the election and getting them to the polls was incredibly difficult. Our electoral commission, on the other hand, worked tirelessly to guarantee that democracy was protected throughout the country and a democratic administration was established. Hmm, okay. At the time, only people of the age of 21 could vote and... Um, hey Bharat, hey Bharat. So, what are you reading today? Fully enjoying the rainy season, eh? Hmm, Bharti. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what, today I thought, why not read something about the elections? Uh-huh. As I sat down to read, you know Bharti, mm-hmm. I was amazed to come across some interesting facts. Do you know what, Bharti? What? Till 1989, mm-hmm. people below 21 years were not eligible to cast their vote in our country. Uh-huh. But later on, Bharti, mm-hmm. the eligible age limit of an adult for voting was reduced to 18 years. Oh, thank God. Bharat, mm-hmm. otherwise we would have to wait for three more years to cast our vote. And you surely know how painful waiting is. Painful? Oh yes, just as we are waiting impatiently and painfully for our election uncle and Kalpana. <laughs> but, <laughs> come to think of it, Bharti, mm-hmm. we brought laughing? this on ourselves. Have you forgotten? What? Didn't election uncle invite us to his house? Oh, yes, yes, yes. But the rain, Bharat. Hey, Bharti, come on, you're not a sugar bear. Uh-huh. Besides, it's not so heavy that we can't go anywhere. Oh, yes. So let's go then to our electoral uncle's house. Uh, by the way, take mm-hmm. out your umbrella. Oh, yes. And yes. let's head towards uncle's house enjoying the rain. <laughs> <laughs> hello, uncle. hello, uncle. Here we come. Hey, come, come. Barabati. I was waiting for you guys only. Finally, you have come despite the rain. Why wouldn't we come, uncle? After all, we also want to gather important and interesting information from you and Kalpana. Yes, yes. This is the reason why we have arranged for this game today. Game? Uh, what kind of game, uncle? Yes, Gon Banega Gyani. Who wants to become the learned? Aha. Uh-huh. Bharat, Bharti, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. in this game, I will ask questions to both of you. Tell us one thing, Uncle. Will we be allowed to use a lifeline in this game? Oh, yes, yes. Here comes your lifeline, Kalpana. Oh, oh. rain soak greetings to all of you. Aha, hello, hello. So, here is my daughter Kalpana, your lifeline. She will assist you in giving the correct answers. So, are you all prepared? Yes, yes, we are prepared, Uncle. Okay, okay, Uncle. Now, please, shoot the questions. We're all ready. So, here is your first question. Who was the first Chief Election Commissioner of Independent India? Oh, that's simple, Uncle. We've already done this in our previous episodes. The first Chief Election Commissioner of India was Sri Sukumar Sen. Mm-hmm. Wow, Bharat. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yes, <laughs> Sukumar Sen served as India's Chief Election Commissioner from 1950 until 1958. You see, the Election Commission of India was created on January 25th, 1950. In our country, the Chief Election Commissioner is a Appointed by the president himself. So, now let me pose an intriguing question. Tell me, which business company manufactured the ballot boxes for the country's 
first ever election. Oh, I, I think I know this. I know this, Bharti. Ah, uh, yes. Ah, uh, the answer is the Godrej company. You know, it manufactured around seventeen lakh ballot boxes for the first election, as elections were conducted solely by ballot paper. Ah, uh, yes. The next question is for you, Bharti. Okay, okay, Uncle. Tell me, tell me. Tell me, when were the first EVM-based elections held? Electronic voting machines or EVMs were first deployed in Kerala Assembly elections in 1982. However, for the first time during the Lok Sabha elections in 2004, uh, the entire country voted using EVMs. Am I right? Yes, Bharti, you correctly stated it. Now, get ready for one more question. Mm-hmm. Which election provided the option of nota for the first time? Election uncle please allow me to respond to this. In the year 2014, Lok Sabha elections nota or none of the above was utilized for the first time. And you know surprisingly even on nota more than 60 lakh people voted. How well informed you are Kalpana. So our initiative Kaun banega gyani or who wants to become the learned will continue. But first Let us take a short break and meanwhile listen to this message from our celebrity icon. Namaskar sadhiyo main hu Saurav Shukla. Aap mujhe Hello there buddies. My name is Saurav Shukla. You certainly recognize me as an actor, a writer and a film artist. Democracy gives us the power to choose our own government and for this voting is very essential. We must realize that it is not just our voice, not just our freedom. but also our duty to protect freedom i would request you all to please cast your vote whenever there is an opportunity welcome back to who wants to become the learner and now we can go on to the next question ready everyone yes yes, yes, yes uncle ready? what does sweep signify in the context of elections uncle that's quite a difficult question i'd like to use a lifeline please okay okay i'm here Let me help you with this. Systematic voters education and electoral participation is the full form of SVEEP that is S V E E P. This is a program operated by the Election Commission to raise voter awareness and voter literacy. The seed of SVEEP or S V E E P first germinated in the year 2009. When SVEEP became a program and was first deployed in Jharkhand elections. Under this The process of removing people's doubt and motivating them to vote is carried out. Well, Bharti, let me ask you a very simple question. Okay. Tell me, when is the National Voters Day celebrated? Oh, that is a fairly easy question, Uncle. National Voters Day is celebrated on the twenty-fifth of January. But do tell us the importance of this date as well. Ah, uh-huh, why not? Why not? I too store arrows in my quiver. Ah, <laughs> uh-huh, then shoot. Okay, on the twenty fifth of January, nineteen fifty, with the establishment of a central, permanent, and independent election commission of India, the groundwork for conduct of free and fair elections was laid down. Since two thousand eleven, we have been celebrating this day, that is the twenty fifth of January, as National Voters Day. Well, well. You all have given befitting replies to my questions. Yay! Yay! I'm happy, Bharti. Yeah, yes, I too am. <laughs> the Election Commission organizes many such programs which not only educate our country citizens on elections and voting, but also make people of other countries aware about India's strong electoral system. Rightly said, Bharti, and I'd like to add to that. You know, mm-hmm. before the 2019 Lok Sabha elections, the Election Commission of India had organized a conference where it was discussed how to involve more and more divyang people in the electoral process and ensure that no divyang person is excluded from voting. Subsequent data states that 63 lakh divyangs added their names to the voter list. So. There was a 22% increase in the number of divyang voters party. Our election commission continues to organize such webinars and seminars for its own staff also which give them the opportunity to learn from other countries and also teach them something. This initiative is known as the International Election Visitors Initiative that is IEVP. 
This program has led other countries across the globe to discuss and deliberate on our strong electoral process. Oh, that's right, Bharti. And I'd like to add a little bit more to whatever okay. you said. In our country, the BLOs play a significant role in smoothening the election process. Mm-hmm. It is the booth level officers who reach out to each and every individual and connect them to the electoral process. They listen to and resolve difficulties pertaining to residents' voters' list. Very true, Bharat. And now, let's listen to a message from a listener of Chhatrapur, Madhya Pradesh. My name is Surya and I am from Prayagraj, Uttar Pradesh. My name is Surya and I am from Prayagraj, Uttar Pradesh. I have graduated and I am now pursuing higher education. My entire family enjoys the Mandata Junction program. We had voted previously, but we were not familiar with the technicalities of the voting procedure. This exercise has not only made us aware of the importance of voting, but has also inspired us to encourage others to vote. I have decided to devote one day per week to teaching poor children. At the same time, I educate them on the significance of elections. Matata Junction has been quite helpful in this endeavor of mine. We must be aware of voting in order to participate in elections. Thank you. Well, well, Bharti, our mm-hmm. listener has proven to be a true electoral warrior. True, true. We are overjoyed to receive such a beautiful message from you, dear listener, and we hope that our other listeners too will continue to share their thoughts and send us such encouraging notes. Mm, do you realize mm-hmm. how much effort our election commission has put in to get the Divyang people to vote? That's and right. in this... The ambassadors of democracy have played a crucial role. Ambassadors of democracy? Mm-hmm. But who are these, Bharti? Well, well, Bharat, listen. A 45-year-old individual named Dilip in Sitapur, Uttar Pradesh announced that he will demonstrate to the nation what we are capable of. Following that, he was named the Booth's Ambassador of Democracy for Sitapur district. In each of the 3,000 voter booths there, one Divyang was appointed as an ambassador of democracy. They were also provided with identity cards. Now, this not only gave a boost to their self-respect, but also motivated them to encourage others to vote. Now, that is what can be called as the spirit of voting, Bharti. Mm. See, there are many more stories like these, Bharti, mm-hmm. which we will continue to cover in future episodes. But now, it's time to ask today's question and give the correct answer to the previous episode's question. And then, Bharti, you know what else? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Announce the lucky winner's name. That's a lot. <laughs> well, for now, the question was, in the last episode, mm-hmm. that is, which nomadic tribe do the tribal women voters of Karnataka Kanchan and Enchin belong to? Yes, the right answer is Hakki Pikki tribe. And now, here is the name of the lucky winner chosen from among those who correctly answered the question. And for this, I'd allow you, Bharti, to announce okay, the lucky Bharat, winner. Thank you for the honor. And the lucky winner is Kesap Chakrabarti from Bhattapukur, Agartala AMC Ward Number 37. Post Office, A.D. Nagar, Tripura West. Congratulations, Kesab Chakrabarti. In your prize, courtesy the Election Commission of India, will arrive at your given address shortly. And so now, listeners, it's time to listen to the question for this episode. Listen carefully. When did the opportunity to vote via EVM in Lok Sabha elections become available throughout the country? Let me repeat the question. From which year did the opportunity to vote via EVM, that is the electronic voting machine, in Lok Sabha elections in the entire country begin? And you can send us your answers to us via the WhatsApp number 9999031950. And do please include your full name and address with your response. Also, Please continue to send us your letters, your poetry, songs, stories. 
we really look forward to hearing from you well bharti mm-hmm. it looks like today it's not just water that has been poured from the heavenly abode but also wisdom has been ah, poured in oh well said well said bharat <laughs> all thanks to our electoral uncle and it's time now for us to take your leave see you again with yet another new and interesting topic related to the elections at this very matata junction till then bye bye what the data junction has been what the data junction what the data junction has been what the data junction